I'm Edie Lash and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. It's 2017 and I'm here now with my very first interviewee. Thanks for coming along. I'm very glad to be here. Thanks for having me back. So Lutfi Siddiqui, you're, the, uh, you're a visiting professor at the LSE. Now, the last time you were here, mm -hmm. we spoke about tolerance and the need for tolerance. We've just seen what I would argue is about the least tolerant year, 12 months. In the last 12 months, we've seen two elections, uh, two votes in the US, the UK, where both neither side particularly listened to each other. One side was completely surprised with the, with the answer. And I would argue everyone's just as angry now. What happened? Is this the fault of leadership? Well, it's certainly not my fault. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's, it's clearly symptomatic of a crisis of leadership that we have right now, which is why the banner is one of responsive and responsible leadership. Um, the, the more unresponsive leadership we've had, the more irresponsive leadership has uh, crept in and created a bit of a vicious cycle. Uh, you could argue that the Davos consensus, uh, which gave us some stability, which is the assumption that globalization, uh, progressive liberalism, uh, these are unambiguously positive, mm -hmm. that has certainly been challenged. Uh, but having said that, the Davos way of engaging multiple stakeholders uh, is certainly that we need more of. But there is a, a leadership problem right now. This is both, if you think of leadership as the marketplace where leadership is a product, then there's a problem on both the supply side and the demand side. Now you argue for something called constructive conflict. conflict. That's right. Now tell me what that means. So one of the manifestations of the type of irresponsive leadership that we, we see is what I call false binaries, where people put up something as either one or the other. Mm -hmm. Every discourse is about two poles. Um, it's as if you, if you call yourself a feminist, you have to vote for Hillary Clinton, or mm -hmm. if you are a Eurosceptic, you cannot be a Remainer uh, in, in terms of Brexit. Mm -hmm. um, whereas life is more nuanced. It's more about and and not ors. And I think that is a necessary condition we need from leaders, is are they able to couch things in terms of ands and not ors? By constructive conflict, what I mean is, uh, and there are two related concepts here. One is uh, that we should be able to engage in a debate on issues without making it personal. And every time leaders make things personal, turn things into generalized hate, we should be able to catch them out, mm -hmm. whether it's right-wing hate or left-wing hate. And the related concept is one of proactive diversity. We need to do a much better job of seeking out the other side of the debate, uh, not just wait for somebody to make a case, but really to ask, um, what are we missing? Am I missing something? Where is the blind spot? These two concepts are intertwined and are a necessary condition for responsive and responsible leadership. So I'm going to ask you, do you think that Donald Trump is a responsible and responsive leader, given what we've seen recently in terms of his tweets, in terms of, of calling CNN fake news, right in the middle of a press conference? What thoughts? My counter question is, is there a tension between responsive and responsible leadership? Mm -hmm. I would argue he's clearly been responsive to a demand out there for a type of leader that tries to make things clear. So every solution is 120 characters, tweetable. Um, and there's a sense of certainty and there's a sense of cause and effect. Nuance takes a lot more bandwidth to understand. So I would say that he has been pretty responsive questionable as to whether that was responsible or not. One more question. Every piece of news that you're hit with, it's very difficult to detach the emotion from the fact. What do you advise to do? So you're absolutely right. You get whipped up. Uh, you know, false binaries become um, exploitative polarization. Then they get whipped up into, into hate in some cases. And we get emotionally wrapped up into that. Uh, it's got to be consciously curtailed. We need mm -hmm. to be able to consciously switch on something in our heads that say, hang on, am I being constructive here? Am I being sucked in? Am I being a sucker for poor leadership? Because mm -hmm. there is a responsibility that followers have as well to not get swayed by that type of leadership. Uh, but it's got to be done consciously. We think it's trainable amongst adults. Mm -hmm. It's certainly trainable and educatable at the level of children. Um, but it's something we need to do consciously uh, in various communities. Um, and, and hope that it becomes, uh, very quickly, it becomes uncool to be a polarizing leader. Rufi, thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion. Thank you. Here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.